Amazing faculty, friends, families, and BC and engineering students. Welcome and good afternoon. I have the honor today to represent VIF's Volatile Indoor Positioning System. Our project is an indoor location positioning system which uses Wi-Fi technology. Behind this project are these beautiful people. Amr Hussain, our project manager. Keith Choi, our technical manager. Rasul Agarwal, our database manager, and myself, Muhammad Siddiqui Rami, the program manager. Today, we'll begin with a small description of our project, our approach, the testing phases, a little description about administrative issues, and then finally conclude with some lessons learned. So outdoors, we have global positioning system, which is used to locate and identify a uh, location, as well as navigational purposes. But indoors, about 97 to 98% of the signal is blocked off by your wall. So what can we use for indoors? The answer is Wi-Fi. Indoors, Wi-Fi can propagate about 200 to 300 feet in line of sight. We also noticed that George Mason has a built-in 802.11 technology. So we tried to make use of it uh, to make our application so that we can navigate through the third floor of this building, the engineering building, specifically the ECE department. The accuracy of our product came out to be 83.33% and the precision of our location identification was three to four meters. Okay, in order to have VIPs running on your machine or working for you, you need a laptop with Wi-Fi capability and uh, to be in the third floor where you can use the Wi-Fi access points. Also, for the software, you need NIST Tumblr. It's an open source software that captures the signal to noise ratio values and MAC addresses. At the same time, you need Java uh, development kit as a platform to compile and run VIPs, our ba uh, Java based application. The only problem is our, our system doesn't work on Vista or any other than XP. Okay, our approach for our project was fingerprinting. Fingerprinting simply is an uh, signal to noise ratio value. From multiple AP address, uh, from sorry, from multiple access points, and it's unique, just like a uh, human fingerprint. The advantages for our system or our approach is we don't need we didn't need to install any hardware. Just we focused on the Wi-Fi uh, access points we have in George Mason. It's simple to implement because we only have a software, which is just software based. Low maintenance. We don't need. To worry about the hardware, maintenance will only debug or work on our software, which by nature make our software or our applications very low cost. And one more point, why we choose fingerprinting over other uh, technologies like TDOA, time, time, uh, time difference of arrival, or AOA, uh, angle of arrival. These two approaches are used widely in outdoors. Once you use them indoors, they lose their accuracy by 50% because they suffer from non-line of sight and multi-path uh, feeding. The only thing that we uh, had some uh, hard time with was built building the extensive database of uh, the unique fingerprints. Okay, this flow chart shows the different stages of our uh, approach. First stage offline, as you see here, the offline stage, we collect the uh, SNR values and we store it in the database. In the second stage, the online, the, our algorithm will be comparing the, the, the user or the client SNR values with the ones in the uh, database to give you an output of the location of the user. Let's take a deeper look into the first stage, the offline stage. It's composed of the database and a visual basic script. DB script, which will be connecting the offline stage with the online stage. In the offline stage, this is the map of the third floor of the engineering building. The red dots are the predefined database locations. The blue dots are the access points. Each access point have a unique area in which its value is maximum and highest as compared to other APs. This is the sample of the database. For example, at Dr. Mark's location, AP1 has the highest value. So it means we are in area one. 
Regarding AP2 and AP3, AP3 has higher value because it has a line of sight path and an AP2 suffers from uh, interference. For AP4 and AP6, even though AP6 is farther than AP4, but the values are still comparable because AP4 suffers from more multipath fading and destructive interference. These are the graphs are the general behavior of the AP. We see the values, they fluctuate around the mean value. Okay, so how does the offline stage communicate with the online stage? The answer is VB scripting. It's an active, active script, scripting technique. It integrates the Java GUI application with the algorithm. Once you press the exact NetStumbler data button, it runs the NetStumbler and closes it. It runs 11 times, get 11 different samples of the client, saves the result as text files. The results are very important for the accuracy of the location. In the online stage, we combine the algorithm with the pinpointing technique in our Java application. So in the online stage, we compute the SR values for the client, compare it to the database, and finally do the calculations to give the XY location of the user. By computing the client's position, it is done by using the Java application. And we give the user a visual by giving them, uh, by providing a graphical user interface, a GUI. <coughs> It allows the user to interact with the software, it's user friendly, and it provides a visual perspective. We use NetBeans Design Manager to design our interface. It has four tabs, the Home, Map, Fax, and Contact Us tab. <coughs> Database, uh, so here's the, the snapshots of the GUI. We have, here's the Home tab the locating button, and here's the map. This is the destination, and this is the client's position. 